Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm here today with Ed Mackey, who is a senior 3D graphics engineer. So I asked Ed to come in and talk to everybody about some of the things that we were showing in some recent visualizations and explain truly what we're looking at. So we, we recently did a video that showed the next 10 years of planned satellites, and this number of satellites gets up to 57,000 planned satellites. And we also just recently did another video it was a close approach last week, and it showed a lot of dots in space. And we wanted to ha have Ed come on and explain very specifically what we're looking at so you understand how to interpret these these videos that we make. Because we, we make videos all the time that show a lot of dots in space, and we don't want to be misleading to let you know, uh, you know that the sky is falling, there's too many satellites up there, that kind of thing. Hmm. So, you know, this, this new space age, this is great. We think this is fantastic that there's all these new satellites going up there. And so just to be clear... Uh, about what we were showing with that particular video, that 10 years of planned satellites. Um, so when, when you look at this video, this is this is kind of how you should think of it. So uh, that original video, w the original runtime was about ten mi uh, five minutes, and the, there was a shorter version. There's a couple other shorter versions. And the Earth that you see underneath uh, actually only went through about 14 hours of Earth time, right? So you see it, it didn't rotate through 10 or 12 years of animation time. It would be, it would have been spinning wildly. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took the data that these companies used to apply for the licenses for satellites, and we applied their simple orbital parameters and spread them out, roughly knowing about when they would launch the, these particular planes and things like that. So there is no high precision orbit propagation, which means that the, if this orbit was to deteriorate over 10 years, uh, that is not depicted here. So this is just showing a possible future based on the filings of these satellite organizations and companies of, of where they want to put satellites. And so you think, well, if a satellite reenters, it's not going to be that busy. True, but they would probably replace that satellite because satellites for a satellite company are their lifeblood. So if they take the time to apply for and put a satellite in a particular place when that satellite is no longer functional, they're going to replace it with somebody else. So again, this, this depiction here is a potential future state. It's kind of unlikely, though, because a lot of these companies will either experience hardware failures, launch failures, financial failures. And even if a fraction of them do end up getting their satellites up there, we're looking at a significant increase to the number of tracked satellites and objects in space. So, Ed, can you tell us a little bit more about something in specific that has come, come up a few times is you see this many dots mm -hmm. in a visualization and you say, that's crazy, it looks like a beehive. It does. And people say, that's not realistic. Well, let's, can, we, can we talk about that? Yeah. So when you look at a, a video like this one and you see all these dots around the Earth, you're, you're actually looking at a very technical diagram, and it's important to understand how to read such a diagram. The most important thing, and it has been pointed out many times, that the actual satellites are not the same size as the dots shown here. And with your permission, I'm going to run through a quickie way, just if you want to try at home to measure the size of the dots. There's a pretty straightforward way to do that. Uh, and then it's, I'm, so I'm going to show you that, and then I'm going to explain it's not quite as straightforward as I led to believe. But let's start with the easy thing to do. I like easy. The easy thing to do is Google the size of the Earth. And you can, you can choose Earth radius in either uh, kilometers or meters, whatever your choice. But we're, we're space nerds here, so we always use kilometers uh, for space. And uh, what you'll find is the Earth uh, is uh, actually a little bit wider at the equator. So I'm going to take the, the equator of uh, 6378, and I'm going to um, punch that into my little calculator here, and I, I haven't explained why I'm doing this, but you'll see in just a moment, that's 6378, 378. So now let's go, I've got a paint program here, and I've got a screen grab of your lovely video that has all these dots. And I'm going to actually measure in my paint program uh, the diameter, not the radius. If I were measuring the radius, I'd have to stop in the middle, and I don't have a point indicating where the middle is. And the diameter is a little unclear, actually, because it's the night side over here, but it's somewhere roughly under this interior shell of satellites here. So down in the bottom footer, you can see numbers are changing, but that rectangle that I'm dragging is somewhere in the vicinity of 850-ish pixels. Actually, I'm going to let go of it, right? Oh, I let go of it, and the size went away, but it's 850 pixels for the diameter of the Earth. And the, and the video was created in... Uh, 1080p. Yes, yes. So we're just going to get a, a kilometers per pixel reading here. 
So that's my radius at the equator. I'm going to multiply that by 2 to turn a radius into a diameter. So here we have a 12 plus thousand kilometer diameter of the Earth expressed as, what did I say, 860 pixels? So we will uh, just divide that by 860, and that gives us kilometers per pixel, which is roughly about 15 kilometers per pixel. So 15 kilometers, what, what's that in, in miles? Are you calculating? Just, a, just over nine miles. Nine yep. miles. So it's as big as a town, right? So uh, maybe bigger, depending on the town. Uh, let's zoom in uh, real quick here and see some of these little blobby guys in orbit. Uh, these things are not just individual pixels, though. They, each one of these dots is probably about three pixels wide. Um, so let's let's take this and multiply by an average. And I'm just asked, this is just an estimate, but an average of three pixels wide. So these little blobs that are collections of pixels are probably in this one image, uh, probably about. 44 to 50 kilometers across. So these these things are are pretty large, and a typical satellite is nowhere near that. It could be anywhere from a CubeSat, which is the size of a baseball, mm -hmm. up to the largest communication satellites are like the size of a, a school bus. So the actual satellite is the tiniest microscopic speck uh, in the middle of the dot. So why why then do we represent them this way? Uh, well, you would never see them at actual size. They, they would be so much smaller than an individual pixel. They would never show up on the display. Um, for example, they've been compared to roads. Can, is it too, can I? Yeah, yeah. I heard Dan Altrogi give this example, and we thought it was a great one. So we're, so. we're totally stealing this from Dan. <laughs> um, this is a typical road map, and you can see these roads are many pixels wide. But if you took a picture of the Earth from this altitude, uh, you would never see the roads. The roads aren't anywhere near that. Traffic that would wide. certainly be a lot better if the if, roads were if that wide. If the roads wide. were that wide, you could drive around everybody. You'd certainly get to where you're going in a hurry. So the point is to show the locations of the roads, but not necessarily show the widths of the roads. And it's the same thing again. Here, I'll bring up my, uh, I'll, I'll bring up the the spacebook uh, visualization from, from Comspock. From Comspock. Um, and it's the same thing here. If, if they were shown actual size, you would never see them. So we actually fix the size of the dot in uh, what computer graphics people call screen space. That is, the size of the dot isn't based on the distance of the camera. The size of the dot is just based on the number of pixels. The, these orange dots always take up four pixels. And the green dots, which are the active satellites, by the way, orange is debris and, and green is active here. And the green ones take up more just to indicate they're active. But it's just a number of pixels to indicate a location. You're also showing a little bit of a trail in the active satellites to yeah, say where they just were. to show the direction that Very they're cool. moving. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in here and show you that physical size and screen space size are not locked together. So I'm going to zoom in on... Well, they couldn't be because then you would, ne like you said, you'd never, you'd see never be able to zoom if, if they were locked together. You wouldn't be able to zoom in and out. Um, so here we are over Florida somewhere, and there's some little bits of debris uh, floating around. Um, and you can see several of these dots look like they would fit in the lake Okeechobee there in Florida. Um, but if I zoom out, you'll see that the dots retain their size on screen, but the Earth is getting smaller because the camera is moving away. And I can pretty quick, I'm sorry for the my, my clumsy mousing around here, but I can pretty quickly get to a point where a single dot or what looks like a pair of dots there is covering up the entire lake in the middle of Florida. And in fact, if I zoom out further than that, I can quickly get to a state where a single dot covers the entire state of Florida. So these dots are not locked to any one physical size. And when you get all the way out here, it looks like, oh no, they've blotted out the sun. Mm -hmm. They're not blotting out the sun. They're, they're, they're uh, nowhere near that big. But, the, but if you didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to see them when we got out that far. Right. So just like a road map, we show them taking up more space on screen than they really take up so that you can understand where they are and how many there are. Um, and I can even turn this display sideways and look in um, from the side. So that's... Uh, yeah, so we, we, we make these animations like this and we make visualizations like this to give you a sense of the quantity of things and their relative positions, but not necessarily their specific sizing, because like we've said, 
about 100 times, you wouldn't be able to see anything. So the reason the reason we do this, we're doing this to raise awareness so that people know how many satellites are up there. And, you know, like we said, they're not they're not a, a physical blocking out problem, but they are mm-hmm. a concern of the space industry. And, Ed, if you could bring up your conjunction assessment tool. So, yeah. so why this is a big deal when you see a simulation like this with showing this many dots is, the, like we said, the number of new satellites going up is is – very high. There's tons of new satellites going up, which is fantastic. Um, well, right now we also have to be concerned about when these satellites get close to each other. So, can we take? Can you explain to me what we're looking at right here? And yeah. this is sort of the genesis of, of why we show visualizations like this depicting so many satellites around the Earth. This this is another uh, controversial display uh, of mine that has also been uh, accused of fear mongering. You know. Every every few minutes, it, it tells you another satellite collision is imminent. And the point is not to keep you cowering in fear under your bed. The point is to highlight uh, how poor the, the tracking data is when used for conjunction analysis. And what what we're seeing here is an artifact of um, the, the the government tracking, which is which is the publicly released TLEs is only good for showing where a vehicle is to within about 25 to 50 kilometers. And if you're using that free government TLE data to do your conjunction analysis, that is to to figure out when your satellite is at risk of colliding with another satellite, you can't just consider the size of the satellite body, which is smaller than a school bus. You have to consider the size of the volume of uncertainty, where the satellite might be given the low quality of your tracking data, um, and if, if the case is that your uncertainty volume is 25 or 50 kilometers wide, well, those large volumes are just gently passing through each other every few minutes, all day, all night, all year long. So this is running right now as we're recording the video. These as are the conjunctions yes, this that are is happening right for now. Those of, yes, for the two of us here in doing the recording, this is live for us. It won't be live by the time the audience watches it. But you could see the list of upcoming conjunctions, and you can see that we're not uh, sounding the alarm that any of these are are very likely to happen. They're all extremely, extremely unlikely to happen. Um, But they do happen. There have been instances in the past. There have been cases. There was a case in 1996 where a a French military satellite uh, suffered an unexpected collision. And then in more recent memory in 2009, uh, there was an Iridium Cosmos collision. So occasionally a conjunction will become a collision. And the problem that we have is the uncertainty volumes are too large. And the problem with an uncertainty volume being too large, even if the Iridium Cosmos collision were to show up in this list, it'd be mixed into this list with hundreds of other entries. And its probability, which you see most of these probabilities are are so low that the, the software running this can't even print a number as low as the probability is, so it puts NA. But that probability is calculated based on the the huge scale of those uncertainty volumes. So even in the case of something like Iridium Cosmos, where the collision ended up actually happening in 2009, it still would show up with one of these ridiculously low probabilities just based on the fact that the uncertainty volumes were so large. Mm. So So what you're saying is we need better space situational awareness Imagine that. (laughs) We do. We need better tracking, better space situational awareness. Um, If we could reduce the size of the uncertainty volumes, then most of the activity you see on the screen would drop off. And sadly, my beloved train station would go mostly quiet (laughs) and and there wouldn't be any of this, any of these entries left on it. But there would be a few during the year that would remain on the board. Mm -hmm. And those would be of much greater interest because those would be you know, 100 meter, 20 meter close approaches, those would be ones worth really investigating. And the rest of these would just be written off as false alarms and and sort of erased from the board. And in reality, with the launching of all these new satellites, we have to get there and we have to get there soon because there's hundreds of new satellites going up right now, not like while we're recording this video, but, you know. But in the next several years. In the next several years, up to 57,000. So that's why we show it. You know, we raise awareness that this is a big thing that we have to think about. I wouldn't say problem. It's just something that we have to calculate out and and get together and get better space situational awareness and plan for it accordingly. That's right. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for explaining the pixel distance for us. Sure. And uh, come back anytime.
Thank you.